Hi, friends, and welcome to Live from the City Opera House. It's story time, brought to you from the historic City Opera House in beautiful downtown Traverse City. I'm your host, Ben Whiting. And on each episode of this show, we're going to have a great story read by a special guest and then have a fun activity that you can participate in right from your home or classroom using objects that you should be able to find in either location. Now, each activity is going to have a theme that will correspond with that day's book. And it could be in the area of science, technology, engineering, art, mathematics, or even local culture. Now, the theme for today's book is take flight. What do you think of when I say the phrase take flight? A lot of us think of birds, of course, and we all know that birds use feathers to take flight. But did you know that birds use feathers for a lot of different things? They use them to show off, blend in, to stay dry, and even to stay warm. And today we're gonna to be exploring all the things that birds use their feathers for other than taking flight. And in today's activity, we're gonna learn about taking flight, pressure, and the science behind it. Now for today's activity, you're gonna need a few things. You'll need a strip of paper, a ping pong ball, a bendable straw, a rounded cheese puff, a thin garbage bag, aluminum cans, string, a clean funnel, and a hairdryer. Now if you don't have these objects readily available, that's okay. Go ahead and watch today's activity leader guide us through our project, and then you can come back and watch it again when you have the objects at hand. Now, in addition to being today's host, I'm also going to be today's guest reader. You might not remember this, but I actually was a professional magician for over two decades, and last season I read a book called The Houdini Box, because Harry Houdini was one of my childhood heroes. Now, in addition to being a magician and an escape artist, did you know that Harry Houdini was also the first person to fly an airplane on the continent of Australia? Now, it was Arthur C. Clarke, the author of 2001 Space Odyssey, who said, magic is just science that we don't understand yet. And I think after today's activity, we'll all agree that every piece of science has a little bit of magic in it, and every piece of magic has a little bit of science in it. And with that, Let's start today's book, and that is called Feathers, Not Just for Flying. Now, today's book is Feathers, Not Just for Flying, written by Melissa Stewart and illustrated by Sarah S. Brannon. Now, what I really like about this book is as we go through it, it will tell you what feathers are good for, but also give you examples of various birds doing that exact thing. So, without further ado, let's dive in. Birds and feathers go together, like trees and leaves, like stars in the sky. All birds have feathers, but no other animals do. Most birds have thousands of feathers, but those feathers aren't all the same. That's because feathers have so many different jobs to do. Feathers can warm like a blanket. On cold, damp days, a blue jay stays warm by fluffing up its feathers and trapping a layer of warm air next to its skin. Or cushion like a pillow. A female wood duck lines her nest with feathers that she plucks from her own body. These feathers cushion the duck's eggs and keep them warm. Feathers can shade out the sun like an umbrella as a hungry tricolored heron wades through the water in search of food, it raises its wings high over its head. The feathers block out the reflections from the sky and shade the water. This makes it easier to spot fishes and frogs. Or protect the skin like sunscreen. On sunny summer afternoons, red-tailed hawks spend hours soaring through the sky in search of prey. Their thick feathers protect their delicate skin from the sun's harmful rays. Feathers can soak up water like a sponge. On sizzling summer days, a male sand grouse cools off by soaking his belly feathers in a watering hole. Then the proud papa flies to his nest. While dad guards his chicks, the little ones suck on his feathers to quench their thirst. Or clean up messes like a scrub brush. An American bittern always cleans up after it eats. Its feathers have brittle tips that crumble into a dusty powder. The powder is perfect for scouring away the dirt and slimy fish oil that sticks to its feathers. 
Feathers can distract attackers, like a bullfighter's cape. A dark-eyed junco distracts its enemies by flashing the bright white feathers on the outside of its tail. Then it quickly covers the feathers and darts off in another direction. Or hide a bird from predators, like camouflage clothing. A female cardinal's dull grayish tan body and feathers blend in with her forest home. They help her hide and protect her nest from enemies while she sits on her eggs. Feathers can make high-pitched sounds like a whistle. When a male club-winged mannequin wants to get a female's attention, he leans forward, raises his wings over his back, and rapidly shakes them. As the feathers with ridges rub against feathers with stiff curved tips, a squeaky chirping sound thrills through the air. Or attract attention like fancy jewelry. A peacock's bright, beautiful tail feathers make him easy to spot. At mating time, a female is attracted to the male with the biggest, most colorful fan of feathers. Feathers can dig holes like a backhoe. After bank swallows mate, they make a home together. First, the male uses his bill and tough feathers on his lower legs to dig a two-foot-long tunnel in a stream bank. He pushes the dirt out with his wings. Then, the female builds a nest of straw, grasses, and leaves at the end of the tunnel. Or carry building supplies like a forklift. Most birds carry nesting materials in their beaks, but not the female rosy-faced lovebird. When she finds grass, leaves, or strips of bark, she tucks them under her rump feathers and flies back to her nest with them. Feathers can help birds float like a life jacket. Mute swans glide smoothly across the water's surface. Pockets of air trapped between their feathers help these graceful birds stay afloat. Or plunge downward like a fishing sinker. Most birds make a special oil to waterproof their feathers, but not the anhinga. The weight of its wet feathers help the hungry hunter dive deep down in search of fish, crayfish, and shrimp. Feathers can glide like a sled. Emperor penguins have tightly packed belly feathers that form slick, firm surfaces. The feathers make it easy for these birds to slide across the ice and snow. Or sprint across the snow like snowshoes. Each autumn, willow ptarmigans grow a thick layer of feathers on top of their toes. Like snowshoes, the feathers increase the size of the bird's feet, so they can shuffle across the snow instead of sinking in. But most of all, feathers can give birds the lift they need to race across the sky. And that is feathers, not just for flying, by Melissa Stewart. This is an absolutely Fascinating book with great illustrations. And being a magician, I am fascinated by the science behind what makes things fly. Back in 2006, I actually flew in a show called Awakening. And right now, I'm going to show you very quickly how you can make something fly yourself using nothing but a styrofoam cup. And all we have to do if we want it to fly is put our hand underneath and watch. You'll see it start to float up and back down. And that's a super easy trick to do because all you need to do is put a hole in the cup and stick your thumb in the back. Now, obviously you don't want anybody to see this, but if you hold your thumb behind the cup, point it at someone and then move all your fingers away, it looks like the cup is flying. And then you can even twist your hand as long as your thumb covers up that hole. But, before we begin, it is time for today's moment of mindfulness. So, move around a little bit, take a deep breath, quiet your mind, and prepare for a little bit more learning. to stand up together we're going to sing we're going to get our bodies moving and the song says we jump 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 together don't you know we're friends forever if you happen to be with someone who's your friend forever look at them give them a high five tell them thank you for being my friend all right here we go we jump 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 together don't you know we're friends forever jump 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 together will you sing it with me come on we jump don't you know we're friends forever? Jump, jump, jump together. All right, listen up. Jump up and down and turn around. Now touch the ground. Don't make a sound. Shh. 
How about if we clap, 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 come on. We clap, clap, clap together. Don't you know we're friends forever? Clap, clap, clap together. Are you clapping? Come on. We clap, clap, clap together. Don't you know we're friends forever? Clap, clap, clap together. All right, we're gonna jump. We're gonna kick, kick, kick. Ready? We kick, kick, kick together. Don't you know we're friends forever? Kick, kick, kick together. I hope you're kicking. Come on. We kick, kick, kick together. Don't you know we're friends forever? Kick, kick, kick together. All right, we're gonna jump. Get up with me. Here we go. However we want to go, we dance, dance, dance together. Don't you know we're friends forever? Dance, dance, dance together. Woo! We dance, dance, dance together. Don't you know we're friends forever? Dance, dance, dance together. Let's jump, jump up and down, and turn around. Now touch the ground. Someone you love, give them a hug, hug, hug. We hug, hug, hug together. Don't you know we're friends forever? Hug, hug, hug together. We hug, hug, hug together. Don't you know we're friends forever? Hug, hug, hug together. All right, you guys, this is our last jump. Make it a good one. Now, to help us out with today's activity, we have special guest Keith Fortin, who is a science teacher at Traverse City Central High School. Mr. Fortin, how about you introduce yourself and get us started with today's activity? Well, boys and girls, it is an absolute pleasure to be here today and to share with you some demonstrations and some history on a discovery that literally changed the world and the way that we move about the world. I'd like to introduce to you here a gentleman by the name of Daniel Bernoulli. He was born at the turn of the century at 1700 and was remarkable as a scientist, a physicist, a mathematician, and kind of a jack of all trades. He made an amazing discovery that changed the world. And it's referred to as Bernoulli's theorem. He published this in 1723, and we still use it today. Bernoulli's theorem describes how pressure, air pressure, changes with the velocity of that air. And what he discovered was as air moves faster, its pressure, the amount of pushing outward, is less than the air that's stationary next to it. It was already known at that time that high pressure always moves to low pressure. And this discovery here, again, was kind of something that nobody else really thought about and changed the way, as you will see, that we move around this world. So let me start with some demonstrations to illustrate this, okay? I'm gonna start with a really simple one. 
It's nothing more than a piece of paper that I've cut in a strip. Now, if I hold a piece of paper out in front of me here, it's pretty easy to understand that if I blow from underneath, the paper lifts. Well, that's kind of easy to understand, but what if I do this? What if I blow over the top of the paper? Watch. The paper still lifts. How can that be? I'm not pushing from underneath. Well, what Bernoulli says here is that air, as it travels over this curved surface, has to travel just a little bit faster than the air underneath. And since this air traveling over the top of this reduces its pressure or has a lower pressure than the pressure underneath, and we know that high pressure now always goes from high to low, the paper just gets in the way as the pressure tries to equalize. So as I blow over the top, the paper lifts. It doesn't get pushed up, it lifts. Now we're going to come back and see this one more time at the end to show you why this is so important. I have two soda cans here that I've tied to pieces of string. They're empty, they just hold freely. And if I were to come up to one soda can and blow on it, I can push that soda can out of the way. And again, that's pretty easy to understand that my exhale of breath here is pushing against that can. But I'm gonna pull the two cans together and I'm gonna hold them fairly closely like this and I'm gonna blow in between them. What do you think's gonna happen? Most people would say the two cans would get pushed apart. And that seems pretty intuitive, but watch. I'm gonna blow between the cans. The cans come together. How can that be? Well, what Bernoulli says here again is air that is moving faster in between the cans has a slightly lower pressure than the surrounding air on either side of the can. And we know that high pressure, again, wants to try to go to low pressure. So the high pressure on each side of the can tries to equalize the low, the cans just get in the way and they get pulled together. Do you have a hair dryer at home? This is just an ordinary hair dryer that I have. I borrowed from my wife this morning. I hope she didn't miss it. And a ping pong ball. Watch carefully. How does that happen? You would think the ball would just get blown away and it would disappear. Why does the ball stay above the hair dryer? Why doesn't it go left or right? Or So again, think what Bernoulli was thinking. Air moving next to the ball is moving fairly rapidly. It has a low pressure on each side of the ball. Around it, though, is high pressure. High pressure wants to go to low. So what is happening here is the low pressure developed around the ball by the moving air, the high pressure is kind of holding it in place, holding it in that air stream. And when I turn this on, you can see that the ping pong ball really doesn't want to move. And you can take this to an extreme Until finally, the weight of the ping pong ball is just too heavy for it to support. And you say, well, wait a minute, I don't have a hair dryer or a ping pong ball. That's okay. Cheese puffs come to the rescue. If you go to the store, every once in a while, you can find a cheese puff that's fairly round. Sometimes they look like popcorn kernels. Sometimes they're actually pretty round. And a small bendy straw. I can kind of do the same thing. By blowing through the straw and holding the cheese puff or balancing it, 
Oops. In the Airstream, the rounder and smoother the cheese puff is, the easier that this is going to work. And as you can see, this isn't what I would call the perfect cheese puff. Do you have a funnel? Please ask mom or dad before you use a funnel. Make sure it's clean. Make sure that it hasn't been used for anything like engine oil or anything. And again, find a ping pong ball or a cheese puff. I'm going to put the ping pong ball in underneath the funnel. And I'm going to blow. And I'm going to ask you, where do you think the ping pong ball is going to go? Well, most people would say that the ping pong ball would get blown down onto the table. And that, I guess, is, makes sense. But watch carefully. I'm going to blow really hard. The ping pong ball doesn't fall until I stop. How can that be? How can Bernoulli explain why the ping pong ball doesn't fall until I stop blowing? Well, again, when I blow really hard, air is rushing past the ping pong ball, creating a low pressure around the ping pong ball, high pressure underneath, high wants to go to low, and it literally helps support the ping pong ball until I stop, and then it falls. Do you have a really lightweight garbage bag? I'm going to take the biggest, deepest breath I possibly can. And I'm going to try and inflate that garbage bag. I can't do it. I just can't take a big enough breath. So how can I get more air into the garbage bag? Ah, I'm going to open the garbage bag and hold it away from me, and then blow. Ready? There you go. How did that happen? How did that work? Well, by me holding the opening of the garbage bag slightly away and blowing into the opening created a low pressure. High pressure from around tried to equalize that. And so high pressure tried to rush in, and in doing so, helped me inflate the garbage bag. So I want to come back full circle to this. At the very beginning, you saw that if I blew over the top of this, it lifted. So why is that important? Well, if you look at the shape of this, and you look at the shape of an airplane wing, airplane wings are curved. And if I were to hold this correctly with my paper and my airplane wing, my airplane wing is curved. So as the airplane goes through the air, air has to travel over the top of the wing, has to travel underneath the wing. But by traveling over this curved surface, it has to speed up just a teeny bit. And in doing so, it creates lift. And so if I hold this as I did across the wing and blow, the plane would be lifted. It wasn't until 165 years later that the Wright brothers actually demonstrated this for real for the first airplane flight on the coast, on the East Coast. So we can thank this gentleman right here, Daniel Bernoulli, for changing the world and allowing us then to use aircraft and air wings to create lift to fly us from Traverse City to maybe Florida, Detroit, Chicago, or wherever. So I want to thank you for this opportunity. I hope I get a chance to see you again. Thank you so much. Great work, everyone. Well, that is it for today's episode of Live from the City Opera House. It's story time. We hope you'll tune in next time. And remember, 
You can watch future and past episodes at tcaps247.com on your local PBS station and at michiganlearning.org. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, this is your host, Ben Whiting, saying stay safe, have fun, and keep learning. Take care. This program is made possible in part by the Michigan Department of Education, the state of Michigan, Forefront Credit Union, the Schmidt Community Fund, the Les and Ann Biederman Foundation, the Olson Foundation, and viewers like you.